In the past hundred years, the forest industry has harvested millions of trees to meet the world demand for wood. At the same time, much valuable timber has been destroyed due to fire, insects, and disease. If these areas that have been logged or ravaged are left to reforest naturally, they may not be ready for reharvest for a long time. Chances are some may never regenerate satisfactorily. We need these areas to reforest as quickly as possible to guarantee a sufficient number of healthy trees for future harvests. About 40 years ago, the Forest Service began forest renewal programs. They reforested barren areas and tended the young natural forests. They collected seeds, grew seedlings, and planted them throughout the province. Over the years, the programs have grown to where thousands of people are now engaged in the growing and tending of BC's forests. Research and development is paying off. We are beginning to reap the harvest of the first managed forest. While many of our forests are naturally regenerated from young growth under old stands or from nearby seed sources, there is no guarantee that a sufficient number of young trees will reforest these areas or that they will be of the best quality in growth. Following a timber harvest or fire, there may be a delay period to allow restocking to take place. Regeneration surveys will be conducted later to determine the extent of natural growth. The number of young seedlings are counted, and on this basis, the decision is made whether the area needs restocking. The more productive growing areas usually get the most attention because of their ability to produce a much larger harvest. If a decision is made to reforest any site, ecological factors must first be considered. Research and experience have shown that seed or seedlings will grow best if returned to the same general geographic area and elevation as the parent tree. As a second requirement, the seeds used to reforest the site must be of good genetic quality. Only the best available parent trees within a seed zone are chosen for seed supplies. A good parent tree is the tallest and straightest in a natural stand. A good cone crop may occur once in every 15 years. This means that in a good year, sufficient cones must be collected from the different seed zones to last throughout the poor years. To estimate a cone crop, a winter bud survey is taken. A great number of sample branches are collected and placed in a warm environment to simulate spring thaw. The female buds are counted and then compared to the number of male buds. This provides a basis for determining whether there may be a collectible crop. When the cone crop is forming during the following summer months, survey areas which indicate promise are frequently checked. When the cones reach maturity, they are collected. The safest and easiest method is to gather them from recently felled trees in active logging areas. Other methods include employing tree climbers and more recently, experimenting with aerial techniques. As a more manageable alternative to wild stand collections, seed orchards have been established. Here, cuttings taken from the best trees are grafted onto rootstock. These trees are carefully managed to maximize seed production and provide more frequent cone crops. With pollination control, an even higher quality of seed may be produced. Regardless of how or where the cones are collected, they are tagged according to their species and source. The cones are kept dry and cool and shipped to the Forest Service Seed Center or to a commercial extractory. There they are heated in a kiln and then shaken to extract the seeds. Good seed is separated from the chaff and carefully packaged. Each seed lot is labeled according to its species and place of origin 
and then placed in cold storage. The Forest Service tries to maintain a 10-year supply of seeds as an insurance against poor crop years. The best time for planting a new crop is as soon as possible after the forest is harvested or the land is denuded. Evaluation for site preparation and planting is based on ecological factors such as soil type, slope, species and elevation. The extent of natural regeneration, vegetation and productivity of the site are also taken into consideration. Prescriptions are formulated for each area to help get the land reforested quickly with the most suitable seedlings. These prescriptions are often prepared several years before the area is scheduled for harvest. Areas with sufficient growth under harvested stands or those with a nearby seed source require no planting, but may need some mechanical site preparation to assist nature. To provide a better medium for seed germination, the ground can be scarified to align and crush debris and expose the mineral soil. The area is then left to allow natural seeding to take place. If an area is scheduled for planting, some site preparation is usually necessary. The method of preparation chosen is based on site evaluation and prescription. Broadcast burning is a recognized silviculture treatment on many areas. It reduces fire hazard and heavy slash and allows better planter access. When the slash is lighter, a bulldozer may be used to windrow or bunch the slash into rows or piles where it can be burned. Seedlings are planted individually by hand throughout the prescribed area. Great care is taken to ensure that good planting spots are chosen, that the spacing between them is acceptable, and that they are planted at the correct depth. The nursery program utilizes the seed collected as the seedlings are required. Throughout the province, sowing requests are prepared by Forest Service and Industry field staff based upon on-site prescriptions. Nurseries receive orders according to their ability to produce individual species in sufficient numbers. There are 10 Forest Service nurseries located throughout the province, with the current annual capacity to grow approximately 90 million bare root seedlings and 30 million container seedlings. Bare root nurseries need substantial areas of flat land, well-drained soil, and a plentiful supply of water. Nursery soil is cultivated, fertilized, and weeded to promote rapid growth. Prior to sowing, the seeds are soaked in water for 24 hours, surface dried, and then maintained at 2 degrees Celsius for approximately 30 days. This promotes more uniform and rapid germination of the seeds. Seeds are usually sown using a drill seeder, this machine makes seven drills or rows in a nursery bed and seeds are deposited at regular intervals along each drill. Depending on seedling growth, a root pruning machine is used to trim off the longer root ends. This encourages the growth of bushier roots, which improves the seedling's chance of survival when outplanted. At the end of a second growing season, seedlings may be lifted for outplanting. This job is speeded up greatly by a machine capable of lifting seven rows at once. In the sorting shed, good quality seedlings are bundled and any long roots are chopped off. They are then placed in a cool environment to preserve them until planting. Some seedlings, however, are transplanted in the nursery and allowed to grow another season. This will later increase their survival rate in areas that tend to fill in quickly with brushy vegetation. In the container nursery system, seedlings are grown in a controlled environment. This allows nursery workers to better manipulate the seedlings growth. Seeds are mechanically sown into containers which are filled with a fertilized soil mixture. 
After germination, the containers are placed in a greenhouse or a shelter house. Here, the seeds are grown until they are large enough to be placed outdoors. Some seedlings require a transition period, so they are placed in a shade house where they become gradually acclimatized. At the end of the first growing season, a plantable seedling is produced. The seedlings, or plugs, are removed from the containers, wrapped in bundles of 25 and stored until ready for shipment. Container seedlings have greatly reduced handling costs and growing time. Seedlings are kept cool to maintain them in good condition when shipped from the nursery to the plantation site. The seedlings are planted at a density according to a planting prescription. The density ranges from about 2,000 to 700 trees per hectare. Sample plots are established throughout the planted area to assess density and to determine the survival rate of the plants one to three years after planting. If the total of planted and natural seedlings meets the Forest Service standards, the plantation is considered established. If this standard is not met, the area may be scheduled for fill-in planting. The seedlings must continue to grow for 50 or more years. Silviculture tending programs are carried on throughout the growing cycle of the stands and their application ensures that the managed areas will produce maximum yields of merchantable timber. On the sites where non-commercial trees and brushy vegetation crowd out young trees, a conifer release treatment is applied. This treatment involves the removal of brush and unwanted vegetation from the forest, thus reducing competition and allowing the young valuable trees a better chance of survival. To reduce crowding in commercial forest stands, juvenile spacing is carried out when the trees are 15 to 30 years old. Here, the poorer quality trees are felled, leaving only the better formed, superior ones. The removal of these trees improves the growth rate of the residual stand. To accelerate growth after spacing, fertilizers may be applied over the residual trees. This is done only on selected stands, as it is a costly process. Older, immature stands may be thinned commercially if the timber to be removed is marketable. Individual trees are selected and marked for removal, and small specialized equipment is used to fell and remove the trees to avoid damage to the residuals. Trees that are diseased or attacked by insects should also be removed from the residual stand. Removal of these trees or sanitation cutting reduces the chances of further damage. We are nearing the end of the first cycle. As areas are harvested, they must be restocked and cared for throughout their long growing period. Ministry personnel and private industry work closely in establishing and tending forests for the future. As well, a rehabilitation program has been developed in conjunction with the Canadian Penitentiary Service and the Provincial Corrections Branch, where inmates can work with the various silviculture programs. Our forests must be treated as a renewable resource. We have the responsibility to make sure they produce a reasonable crop for future generations. Silviculturists and researchers are now aided by computers and modern technology in their projections for the future. Information from past surveys and experiments applied to current techniques will ensure that sufficient trees regenerate and that they will be of the best possible quality. With proper management, our forests will continue to grow and thrive and remain our number one resource.